Hello everybody and welcome to another Jojo Lux video and welcome to another tagged video. We've got a whole lot of eye candy to get through. So firstly, thank you so, so much to the fabulous and the stunning Amelia Rose's Closet for tagging me in this. I've said before how much I love doing tagged videos um, and I do. Less thought required for this one. I had to remember some stuff but apart from that um, I wasn't having to choose between my babies and um, so this is the tag talking about handbags that I bought pre-loved so this is my pre-loved bought collection and I will let you know where I got them and I can't really remember when but I'm gonna do it in the order in which I bought them uh, I think and um, there are a couple that have come in and, and gone again and we'll talk about that at the end actually because buying pre-loved isn't for everybody it's something that I didn't think was for me at one point not because I think there's anything wrong with it because there isn't I mean unless you're buying fakes you know without knowing but um, I like things to be perfect I'm a perfectionist in life, believe it or not. I'm probably looking at the state of me going, not your makeup, love. Um, but I am a perfectionist, you know, naturally. And I like things to be perfect, which means I like to buy my bags perfect and, you know, have them without a single mark, dent, scratch. So pre-loved is something that, uh, like I say, doesn't come naturally to me. So let's start with the first one. Um, I've got these all from a number of different places as well. So, and we're not going to talk SLGs, we're going to stick to handbags. We haven't got all day. So, here we have the ruffly, the noisy. Here we have my Chanel GST, so that's the Grand Shopping Tote in Beige Claire with the quite unusual actually for this combination silver hardware. Now this, as you can see, is in really good condition. Um, one of the pitfalls of this bag, one of the um, like the features that you can suffer from this bag if it's not stored properly, is slouch. But you can see, looking at mine, there is very little. I mean, if you look at the angle here, maybe you can see the which for these bags it, that is absolutely nothing now it's quite interesting how i ended up buying this so i was watching a oh, I'm trying to feel this before i run out of light uh, i was watching a video by minx for all and within that i was eyeing up and looking at her alma pm in the vernis in like the, the burgundy purpley burgundy color and i was like yes that's what i want and then within the hour, I'd completely changed my mind. I decided I wanted the Chanel GST. I hunted one down um, and basically bought it. Now, I got this from the website Hardly Ever Worn It, or H-E-W-I. It's a bit like Vestiaire Collective, but based in London. Um, so, yeah, I got this, and it was in even better condition than it is now. I mean, this is in, I mean, this is in good condition, but I have used it. There is minor, minor wear to the corners. That's probably the worst one, but there, there is, there is, you know, minor wear. Now, when this arrived, it was almost as described, almost. There were some really weird yellow marks on top of this caviar leather. Um, now, I managed to clean them off. I bought some specialist cleaning products and I was able to clean them off, but it wasn't that easy. So, yeah, pretty much as described, this is a great bag. I know a lot of people struggle with the handles that they fall off. The tip is to cross them over when you wear it. And then I also find if you cross it over and then flick it a little bit to the back if you're walking a lot, it will stay on. Trust me, it will stay on. Um, also, just put enough in it so it's heavy enough and it will 
the way it will stay on. This fits my work laptop just, but it does fit my work laptop. I keep mine stored with some bag inserts. If I'm using my work laptop, I do have to remove it from one side because literally that just, that two millimeters of felt either side is enough for it to not fit in. But it's a great bag. I love this really ample back pocket particularly if I'm doing the commute to London because I can put my travel pass in there. I've got to delve in the bag. I've said many times this channel, I'm not a rummager. Um, and I love the organisation that it gives whereby you've got the two, excuse the air paper, but you've got the two key compartments and then this middle compartment. In addition, you've got a D-ring hook, you've got a slip pocket, you've got a zip pocket. Um, so yeah, didn't necessarily need an organiser in this, but I really wanted it to maintain that structure because I don't like the look of these with slouch. I'm sorry, but it's a it's a structured style bag in a structured leather. I don't like slouch on it. Some bags I do, I don't mind a bit of slouch. I think it suits them, not this one. So this was my first ever pre-loved and it was in near, I mean, it was not in bad condition at all. It wasn't brand new. It wasn't a brand new bag. I didn't have a choice but to buy this pre-loved because these were discontinued in, I think, 2015. Um, I believe mine was a 2012 version, something like that. Um, but yeah, and I also really want, I can't remember who I'd seen. I'd seen someone online that had this with the silver hardware and I was like, oh, that's, I think it might be Minx. Uh, I think she's since sold it, but I liked the beige Claire with the silver hardware more than the gold. So hunted quite a lot to find that. But yeah, a great bag, I really love that. Then something else happened a while later. Just like that. Oh yes, it's more Chanel. More Chanel. This is a fabulous one. And now a bargain. So here we have my oh look at her on camera. Here we have my Chanel. Maxi Classic Flap and mine is black lambskin with silver hardware and yes look it's a single flap again a bag organizer and a pillow um, for storage just because and don't overstuff the pillow is just right um, because with these the single flaps I love I'm a single flap girl I love the single flap style, I've, I can talk about that for quite a while, but the, the con of single flap, so many pros, but the con is that they can be subject to losing their structure, so again having that bag insert just does help maintain the structure on this larger bag. Like I said, I have a classic flap which is a proper double flap um, in the classic so it's the medium large, what used to be called the medium large, I think it's just now called the classic on the Chanel website. Um, don't bother with a bag liner on that, I'm not sure I ever would, um, but I do on this. Now again, look at the condition of this. This bag is in great condition. Not perfect, but great condition. Bit of wear to the corners and there is a weird mark on the back somewhere. Somewhere around here there is a weird mark. Um, I have cleaned this bag, I have conditioned this bag. That is the, the key thing that I've done with this bag, is just keep the leather nice and moist. But you can look, see the gloss on it. Now, I have not babied this bag whatsoever. I came back from work once with a sack of potatoes in it. But I love this bag, I've used this bag a lot. I, I did, it was like it from when I bought it, the, clasp, the hardware, the clasp, got a bit loose and it did used to open itself whilst I was walking along. I took it to Chanel um, and they just replaced it for your charge, which was great. I thought I was going to have to pay and I was prepared to pay. It's, you know, it's, it's an old bag. I didn't buy it new from Boutique, but they just replaced it for your charge, which was amazing. Um, that's, that's all that I've had done to this. Um, nothing else has been done to it other than me just trying to maintain its glossiness but a brilliant bag a brilliant work bag um you can fit a small laptop in this but i think it has to be like on the 11 inch 11 12 inches um but it's just a brilliant 
a brilliant bag. You know, you can certainly fit an iPad in here, no trouble at all, as well as, you know, everything else you could need, which for me is tea and food. I carry quite a lot of food in my handbags. Um, but yeah, I bought this from, a, actually from a company. So there's a, there's a lady that I've bought things from before on one of the Facebook groups. It's, your Facebook is, um, you'll see, but be careful, people. Be careful when buying pre-loved. Don't just go to the marketplace. I'm sure some people are lovely, but get stuff authenticated. Um, trust is a hard thing these days. Um, but when you're part of the, the, the luxury handbag Facebook groups, there are you know there are procedures in place there are admin who will support you and people that will spot I mean, some of them are amazing people will spot fakes so um you do have i don't you know and also if you're paying by paypal goods and services and then you've also got some protection there um but yeah if in doubt get get stuff authenticated before buying you know um so I bought this actually from a company, but it's no longer trading. The lady still sells stuff privately on the groups, but um, it's no longer trading. But I paid, so I didn't take the other one. I, for both of these bags, I paid about £2,000 each. Um, I mean, what this retails for now? What, 8K or something? Um, crazy amount of money. Um, but yeah, I got this. I won't sell this bag. I did think about it when I got another bag there in the orange bag, but I decided not to for the reason that I'm quite carefree with this bag and I enjoy being carefree. I think for me, buying pre-loved is a bit like buying a car that's not brand new out of the showroom. If it's already got the odd minor hairline scratch, you worry a lot less. It's almost like that first mark with anything. That first mark is the one that you worry about, you know, be it a mobile phone or, or anything, you know, and you more like to drop it because you're worried. Have it fine pre enough, knowing it's not perfect, but also knowing it's, you know, now, I mean, this bag's, what, 10 years old? Um, she's survived this long. I'm sure she'll survive me using her. So... Yeah, that's how I got this one, it was from a small company, like I say, it's no longer trading. But an excellent, an excellent buy. Again, oh, I'm such a good shopper. Right, the next one, then there was a little while, and there were, I did buy a Alma PM in the multi, limited edition multicolor. It didn't work out for me, I don't know why. Um, there were some weird marks on it that I that were just from the lining, how it seeped through, and I think it just I, it just didn't quite call cool to me. I don't know if the vachetta was too used, or I'm not saying it was misled. That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, I think just sometimes you think something's a bargain, and you're attracted to the price, and you think that you want that bag, and then in reality you can have it and not reach for it. And you look and you go, well, I don't know why. So that I did sell on without even using it, um, which is, is sad actually, but it just, for whatever reason, um, I didn't find myself wanting to use her. And um, I also bought a, between these, I bought a Chanel Cambon little shoulder bag in pink and black. Now, I think for that, I was like, oh, how much I paid, four or five hundred. I was like, it's a Chanel bag for four hundred pounds, so that's a bargain. Um, I struggled to style it. I don't know if it was the style of it, the shape of it. When it arrived, I was disappointed with the condition. There was more damage that, the damage had been disclosed, but there was a little bit more than I anticipated. And that's the other thing to remember when buying pre-loved is do study the photos because we're all different and we all have different standards and we all have different different levels of pickiness. What can bother one person won't bother another. You know, we see it on like a lot of the Louis Vuitton sites. Someone's going, oh my God, look at this stitching. And someone's going, what? Looks fine to me. So we all are different. So do look at the photos and check it's okay for what you want and what you think. Because sometimes what one person doesn't notice sticks out like a sore thumb to another. Um, so yeah, so this other Chanel bag, I'll, I'll, I'll have a picture of it, I'll insert it, but this other Chanel bag, I think I struggled to style. It was a good little bag, it held quite a lot for its size. Um, I've done a video on the restoration of it as well. Uh, I did send it away and have some further work done. It just 
we didn't quite connect. So I did sell that on. Um, I think I lost I lost money on it, but um, not a lot. But yeah, pretty much the price of the restoration. But it was you know there's no point having money sat on the shelf not being used. I buy my bags to wear them and to use them. And if I don't ever wear or use a bag, then that's when I'm likely to sell it. I never buy with the intent to sell. I never buy with the intent of investment. I buy because I love handbags and like to use them. But yeah, sometimes things don't work out. Fast forward a few years. Oh, well, my tastes have changed, along with my budget. Uh, my bank balance is lower. So then I saw this beauty. I remember my husband was away at the time. And I saw this beauty. Look at this. I mean, look. Look at her in all her glory. So this is my Kelly 35 in the colour Blue Hydra with gold hardware in toe leather. Yes, there's some slouch. This does bother me. Now, it's a feature of the 35s, but I'm constantly going like this, going, don't slouch. Um, but it hasn't got any worse since I've owned her. Um, and again, I knew that they find me a 35 that's not brand new, that doesn't have a slouch. Uh, and basically what happened was someone that I know on Facebook groups um, was selling this at less than retail. And this was love at first sight. I just loved the colour. Um, and then we did some talking and I got the measurements, you know, because obviously I know it's 35, but I got the measurements from the top and I realised that yes, this is big enough for my laptop. Um, I think that slouch is getting a bit better. I have a bright yellow, I'm not going to open it all up, but I have a bright yellow 7RP insert in here, which is really helping. And oh my God, the organisation it gives me is amazing. Love it. So yeah. I've got a discount code, I'll put it in the description box below. You can get 25 euros uh, off each insert or 70 euros if you buy two. So yes, yeah, so that's uh, Jojo Lux 25 and Jojo Lux 70. So the, the codes have changed, but I'll put them in the description box. So yeah, this is my Kelly 35. Came with the, didn't come with the box, but came with the dust bag. The, it's got the clochette, it's got the strap. Um, in, I think the only thing to note on this bag is that there's some slouch. That's it, there was no other noticeable damage, perhaps some hairline marks on the feet. I don't know, look all right from here. So, a really good buy, like I say, paid about a thousand pounds or so, 1500, less than retail. So I was I was happy. If you are buying pre-loved, um, there are quite luxury promise do have quite a few Kelly 35s. Now bigger bags are coming back in. Kelly 35s pre you know buying Kelly 35s pre-loved, you're not paying the premium that you're paying for a Birkin or 30 or a Kelly 28 or a Kelly 25. The 35 is a good price. So. Check them out. Um, if I see any, I'll have a look on Fashion File as well. If I see any, what I think are good ones at a good price, but you should be able to pick up a Kelly Thirty Five for about but anywhere from sort of seven to eight thousand pounds, which is less than retail. And they're a great bag. Can get a little bit weighty, but for a, a work bag, is a brilliant bag. You can fit everything you need in there. So yeah, really love that one. I love them all. Then a number of months later, exactly the same person. This happened. I mean, I decided that after my next bag that I had on my wish list, that my next wish was going to be for a Birkin 35 in Rouge Cassac with gold hardware in Epsom leather. And then the lady that I bought this from put this up for sale. Uh, 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 number of weeks or so after I'd messaged my essay that oh, sorry. I 
I've sealed, sealed her with the clochette in. That's going to bend the strap out. Um, sometimes I like the clochette. I'm not too fixed. Sometimes I'm a clochette on person, sometimes I can cl clochette off. Now being red, this is really, okay, Rouge Cassac, I um, don't do too much with this bag. Also being Epsom leather, which is fairly durable. I don't do too much with this bag, so I quite like the clochette as a little extra decoration. So there she is. Beautiful. Not perfect. Not perfect. There are, if you catch her in a certain light, and this is the thing with Epsom, yeah, there's a couple of scratches on the back there. If you catch in a certain light, which I'm not doing, you can just about see them, but they've not gone all the way through. They're very light. Um, yeah, there's, there's minor hairline scratches to the hardware, but all in all, again, I bought this for less than retail and pretty much pretty much perfect condition really not not you can see there's signs of use um, and Epson never does do this in a larger bag you can see but once you know there's stuff in there and that's that's pushed out but I love the 35 in it I love the 35 when it has that old slouch look which is very unlikely for most bags I like everything to be pristine the Birkin 35 I love it in something like Gris Tortorelle or trench or etoupe and it's someone's you know it's normally a celebrity you see and they're walking around like it means nothing and it's slouchy and it's well lived and they put whatever in it i love that look i think it is so stylish and so like just using your birkin as a bag not like oh it's a birkin but this is my bag i'm owning it i'm using it and i love that look however they are coming a little bit heavy, so I do like the Epsom leather for the 35 in that it's a lot lighter. So if, if weight on the 35 does put you off, check it out in Epsom leather. So yeah, mine is just the standard Ritorno version, and I really love this bag. I think I say that for all of them, I really love. The final one I bought uh, in December. So just before Christmas, it was very naughty. This bag is unbelievable. This is truly, truly special. And to find one in this condition. This is, just look. This is my Kelly 32 Cellier with gold hardware in black box calf leather. Comes with the clochette, comes with the black strap. There's a very minor dent there, which I knew before purchasing. It was all disclosed. I got this from a another, but a different private seller on Facebook groups. And just to find this bag in this condition is rare. Absolutely amazing. And also what I love about so the early vintage ones don't have this extra hook here. So yeah, this was my final pre-loved bag, which is truly, truly special. Not much to say about this one really. Very little signs of use. I mean, even the corners are just perfect. Like I say, there's a minor, that minor dent on the back, which I think is just from storage. I don't know if I can do anything to fix that. It's on the back anyway, so it doesn't bother me so much. Now box leather is very delicate. I've just caught it in my now. Box leather is very delicate. It can apparently blister in the rain, but it's so, so stunning. But minor scratches and things do, they do sort of patina out over time. So don't be too worried to, to use them. So that is my entire collection. I've got from a number of places, um, like I say, online stores, private sellers, small businesses. Um, if you are buying pre-loved, just be careful. Just make sure that your item is genuine. Any questions at all, then do not hesitate to ask. And I will see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.